mega. Uh, some voltage something or something. I don't know the details of it, but I thought that was particularly clever. It's not like that in the Sega Genesis. You just look for Sega, and then they, your little lawyers shake after you if, if you violate that. I don't know what it is nowadays, but whatever. Uh, blue areas, we don't use. We don't really use a lot of areas. Actually, we, you can use a lot of areas, but I don't use a lot of areas, so I'm not going to care about them too much. This area right here is where the Z80 is mapped. You have the squigglies going down to the Z80. After that, we have a little area here, which I didn't represent with numbers, unfortunately. That is mapped to the controller. This little squiggly goes down to the controller. And this is a similar interface as this, where you have registers that you write to. It's a little bit different. Uh, nothing. Then you got this sweet little area. That's where those two addresses are. Well, those eight addresses. But one's 32-bit, one's 16-bit. So I guess not all eight addresses, but whatever. That's where those two things are. Then you got 64K of RAM, which you can pretty much do anything with right here. The RAM is mirrored, and everything's mirrored in the blue area. And there's all sorts of funky shit going on in the blue area that you can take advantage of if you want to. Uh, but we don't have much time here. And that says, that's the end of memory right there. I don't know. It's a little cut off there. So let's talk about the Z80. Well, no, no. I'll talk about the VDP with this squiggly since it goes up there. All right, so this is the VDP. This is where the squiggly comes in. And uh, again, we talk to the VDP through registers. Um, the VDP has three areas of memory, all of which are entirely used and have no real map. These definitely have no map. They just serve one purpose. Uh, VSRAM controls scrolling up and scrolling down. Uh, CRAM versus kind of like saying I say CRAM all the time and no one knows what I'm talking about, controls the colors. You can have 64 colors. Raise your hand here. Who likes colors? Uh, the entire crowd. <laughs> you don't like colors at all back there. I gotta, are you maybe colorblind? Uh, never mind. This is a, don't want to offend anyone here. Colorblind. has 64 colors uh, from a palette of 512. It's 9-bit, 3-bit associated with RGB. Uh, so that's what's stored in CRAM. It's stored in kind of a funky way where it's not one after another. There's a gap there. I'm not going to talk about that, but it's not mapped as you would think it would be. Just keep that in mind. Uh, think and it with E a lot. That's it. <laughs> so if you ever do it, just and it with E a lot, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Then this serves a number of purposes. It's VRAM. It is 64K, like the actual RAM. Uh, it serves these purposes. These aren't mapped anywhere. They're controlled with registers, which you set uh, using the 68K, using those two addresses. You have scroll A, scroll B, window, H scroll, and sprite, uh, the sprite ad ad attribute table. Uh, scroll A and window are connected. I'll talk about scroll A. Uh, scroll A is a plane of 8 by 8 uh, pixels uh, that form a sprite. This is what we talk about when we talk about sprites. We have this two-dimensional array of pixels, and that's a sprite. So you have uh, a number of sprites. They can be a number of variables long and a number of variables uh, high that compose a two-dimensional array of these sprites, and that's called a map. Uh, think characters on a screen. You can have characters next to each other, and if you think of every character, A, S, S, H, O, L, E, being individual sprites, um, that's pretty much how you'd think of it. So, <laughs> yeah, so if, you're, if your terminal is 80 by 25, that's 80 by 25 sprites. Uh, for the Sega Genesis, you can have terminals of 32 by 32, uh, 64 by 32, 128 by 32, and then 32, 64, 128. But you got to be careful to not exceed the barrier of VRAM. You can't have 128 sprites by 128 sprites because you can't store that in there without clobbering all the other shit. So Windows is the same thing. Um, but Window and Scroll A are connected together in a very special way because you can have registers in the VDP which, uh, based on different areas in the screen where you're, where you're drawing, can replace all subsequent drawings of pixels with what's in window. It becomes like this window that you can show. 
And I'm not going to talk about window either uh, any further, because I don't really use it, and I haven't really seen too many games that do. You can use it, but uh, we haven't gotten that far. Scroll B is the same thing. doesn't have a window associated with it. H scroll is an area of memory that s controls uh, the horizontal scroll of every line, or every eight lines, or the entire screen. You have three different modes to do this. And uh, you select those modes with a register. VS RAM is the same thing, but or vertically. You can select the entire screen or every two 16-bit uh, pixels, every two, every two patterns, excuse me there. And the reason for that limitation is uh, VS RAM is only 80 bytes long, and you can't have every line because that won't fit there. So let's talk about the Z80. And if you can't see, this squiggly goes to a TV because it's connected to a TV. That's the Z80. Uh, this is the picture I made last. It looks a little bit different, but uh, it has this little area here, and I should have labeled it with the other one. But uh, this is the map. It's similar to the 68K in the sense that everything is pretty much static. You have memory at the beginning. That's where it starts. There is no real interrupt table of sorts that it starts from. It just starts from zero. And uh, you've got to look out for that. It kinda, I thought it started at 38, so it starts at zero. Um, this little area here represents these, and these are connected to the sound chip. I'm going to be talking about video, and my friend Lewis here is going to be talking about sound, and we're going to try and do half and half here. So I'll leave those a little bit to him. I'm going to talk about the bank switcher a little bit, though, because the bank switcher is a special area in memory where you store, uh, where you store nine bits sequentially, one after another, and those nine bits become upper bits to where this area of memory, the 68K bank, uh, is in the 68K. And that's 32 kilobytes, that little, that's half of the Z80 memory, that little area there. And you can do a and put the upper bits and have that be associated with any area in the 68K you see fit. Uh, that maybe does not include ROM. I've done some tests. And I can't, I've, there's documentation that says you can do it in ROM, but I can't get it to do it in ROM. So not exactly sure what's going there. You can easily do it in RAM and everything else. And you definitely can't do it on itself and have this infinite mem memory loop that explodes your, your Sega Genesis like it does to the Nintendo in every commercial you see. Um, so let's talk about the registers. These are the registers of the 60, of the VDP. This is my ASCII PowerPoint presentation here. I should have, uh, I should have explained that, okay, I showed you two, um, two areas of memory that you can write to in order to uh, control uh, registers. You can do a number of different things with those two registers, uh, with those two addresses, not control registers alone. You can do DMA transfers from VSRAM to VRAM to CRAM to VRAM. You can copy between them. You can do it from 68K RAM to VRAM and all sorts of stuff. And you, again, uh, supposedly you can do it from the 68K ROM address of uh, the 68K RAM into VRAM just fine, but I haven't quite got that work to, to work either. So uh, mode set, I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. Uh, mode set one. I have a library that I wrote, so I'm going to reference uh, macros and variables in the library that uh, you can use to set these pretty easily. This is the define for mode set one. It's register zero, zero. And all I have to do is write to one address to set that because uh, one address for those two addresses to set that because that's how those addresses work. And I'll get into that later. Display enable, uh, start the beam, all sorts of things. Just turn it on, turn it off. Palette select, you want that always to be one pretty much. There's some monochrome funky shit if you have it zero, but I haven't explored that. Uh, so one has color, zero has monochrome. Horizontal interrupts, uh, the Sega Genesis can generate three interrupts, a horizontal interrupt, a vertical interrupt, as well as an external interrupt for the controllers and other such things. Um, and those are on the auto vector interrupt tables if you've used the 68K of the 68K. 
then we 